Well, that's a little spooky. I'm sure there's nothing sinister happening in here. But I can't see past the mouse trap. <laughs> Was there something there? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> this can't be good. <laughs> We're starting strong. I, I don't think he made it. You hear something, Peggy? Huh? Hear what? I thought I heard someone yelling, or... I don't know. How? Alrighty, this is your captain speaking. Really? Come on, let's have a bit of fun with it for once. Buckle in, folks. We're <laughs> Remember where that is. Cheap. Let's start with record playing. <sighs> oh, no. I, uh... After your introduction, our first segment is Guess That Scream. I thought that was a joke. You got this. Nope, and don't blame me for this one. It's Reggie all the way, and he demands we do it tonight. Gotta get okay, the killer folks, shot. Shut the music off. Hang on, Peggy. Something's come up in the office. Going through the hoop. I, I think that one went in. Time to turn the music off. Hey, Peggy, please. Okay, you're live in three, two... 189.16. Oh, here we go. Good evening, Gallows Creek. This is your host, Forrest Nash, and you're listening to 189.16, The Scream. Before we start taking your calls tonight on Gallows Creek's only late night phone in talk show, I need to let you know about a special competition we have for you this some evening. some audio quality issues. We need you to guess why they're screaming. Did they stub their toe, saw off a finger, or discover the corpse of a loved one? <laughs> no, it's That's laughter. Good. We're going to need a scream tonight, Forrest, and you're the one at the mic, so... Is this a scream? <laughs> no. Hey, what have we got in the soundboard? Hang on. That's gonna be a vital sound effect. I'm gonna I'm gonna torture some of these listeners. The perturbed yeti, the fallen from a cliff scream, or the drowning scream. Oh, we gotta do fallen from a cliff. <laughs> well, folks, <laughs> what there was you that? Have Call in with your guesses, and if you get it right, you could win two tickets to the amazing Maze Maze and one free fried dough. Fried dough. I introduce the song. Uh, yeah. Time to go on the journey that is Last Processor with their hit song, 1980X. Oh, God, Forrest. Hit the buttons. This is just messing with a Go XLR. I can do this. This is my job. Pop the mic. What else can I do? Oh, Forrest, there's a call coming in. Oh. Forrest, thank God I made it through. My name is Leslie Harper. I'm the 911 operator and police dispatcher for Gallows Creek. Oh shit. Are you calling to guess that scream? Welcome to the show, Leslie. Are you calling in <laughs> to guess that scream? As a 911 operator, I bet you may have an educated guess. What? No. Look, I found a body and I need your help. Uh oh. <laughs> Leslie, if you're telling the truth, you should report this to the sheriff. What was his name, Sheriff? Andrews or whatever. <laughs> I'm at the sheriff's office right now. Wait, what? Sheriff Matthews is dead. What? Sheriff <laughs> Matthews is dead? Oh, he, he took a little slip. Please don't tell me that this hick town only has two cops. Don't be ridiculous. Get some music going. Three. Look, I know some people are dying, but like it's eerily quiet Leslie, and uncomfortable. You... That's why I called. Forrest, I've routed all nine. Oh no. Come into you. Perfect. You're the only person equipped for the job. Besides, there are lots of transferable skills between the two. Now I'll be back as soon as I can. Oh jeez. What? My car! My car is on fire! Wait. What? No, no way. This can't Well, Forrest, we have big trouble. What's happening? Oh, what's that noise? It sounds like Turn whistling? Up. Whistling? It can't be. The whistling man! The whistling man? Who's the whistling man? He was uh -oh. a serial killer back in the 50s. Wore that mask. But he's dead! He's... What the hell? <laughs> lock the doors! Leslie, stay inside and lock the doors. <laughs> right. I almost missed that. Or are there any other weapons lying around that you could use? I didn't see anything earlier. Um... Uh, let me check Deputy Martinez's belt. 
It's like, poor, Le like, Leslie doesn't know what she's doing. I, I don't know what I'm doing. Honestly, of these, Taser. I mean, it's gotta be the Taser, right? Got it. I'm just going to grab Deputy Martinez and then... Wait. <sighs> Do you hear that? Oh, I hear those funky beats, Leslie. Be careful. Be careful. I don't like it. Me neither. But it's an opening, and I've got to take it. Well, they always say you have to be ready for everything in life. It's radio. true. <laughs> have to be ready for a serial killer. Deputy Martinez and the passenger seat still out cold. She's okay. I don't see the whistling man anywhere, and I don't plan to wait for him. So I'm going to get us moving. Jesus! God damn it! Get, get back! Uh -oh. Get away from her! Leslie, what's happening? The whistling! No! Uh -oh. Get off her, you son of a bitch! Yeah! Take that! Oh, d d drive! Leslie, drive! Don't worry, Deputy Martinez. We're out of here. Forrest, that taser? Definitely the right call. She should hate it. I remember, listeners, if you call in now, Leslie, you could win that free fry dough. Him. Any song requests? Let's put on um, the flow, crying for help. Forrest, Peggy, I've got to go. I'll be out of range soon, but I'll radio back as soon as I can once I got the cavalry. Take care. Take care, Leslie. Be safe out there. Good luck, Leslie. Feel better the soon. The children are cheering Martinez. for you, Leslie. As we are in the station. You're listening to 98.5 KFM. Heard it here. Who is this whistling man character anyway? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Edward Marshall Mooney. Went around in a freaky mask whistling and killed about a dozen folks in gallows creek no reason for it no motive he just okay and <laughs> so screwed the police cornered him and he jumped into the river his body was never found so is he alive dead i mean what's the story story is he's biding his time waiting to take revenge on the we're town. in danger All peggy right, that's the i hope story. you've locked the door Hello, caller. You're live on 189.16, The Scream. Is everything, uh, all right? <sighs> <laughs> you know my name. You're on 65.6 FM. We won. <laughs> okay. <Cheese> dusted pretzels. <sighs> okay, so, cheese dusted pretzels and a mega gulp behind the gas station. You got it, whistling man. Uh, a, a wise choice. <laughs> See you soon, Morris Nash. <laughs> the dropping character. Needless to say, I won't actually be going out to the gas station to buy anything for these kids. And none of you should be going out tonight either. We've got an actual killer out Oh there. no, they're not going to die, are they? <laughs> Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Keep Forrest going. Nash. What? I need the sheriff right away. I. Uh oh. I hear a whistle too. Oh, oh shoot! Look, I don't know a thing about cars, but I gotta start this engine without the uh, keys, and you're gonna have to help. Okay. Me. okay well, what, what, what am I looking for to help her? I need something that's gonna help her start a car. A uh, truck? Maybe? I, I, I got a magazine. Okay, leave that there. Hang on. Is there anything in the bar room? This looks useful. Oh, fix all cars magazine. Put a screwdriver in the ignition. Put the screwdriver in the ignition and twist clockwise. The screwdriver's too fat to fit. What next? Uh, hit the steering wheel with the hammer. Unscrew the steering column. Unscrew the steering column. All right. Just turn. Just turn. One, two, one, two. What's the serial number on the steering column? The number is... Five seven six. Eight, eight, eight nine four three two zero. There's a four before a three and number seven and the number red and blue. It's red and blue. And no seven. Oh, there's a seven, so it's not that. This Strip one. and twist together the red and yellow wires. All right. I also see pink and purple wire. What next? A brush against the. Uh, do not touch. Strip the purple wire and twist onto the exposed cable. Well, you're a lifesaver. Oh, wait until my jazzer friends hear about this one. Is that right? <laughs> Oh no! 
Badger! That was a shocking ending. Well, I think we can all agree that was a shocking ending to this call. Forrest! Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Forrest. My name is oh. Brian. Uh, uh, Brian Ponty. Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. Okay. Hello, Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. I just wanted to tell you that I'm sending you some coupons for free pizza here at Ponty's Pizza. Wow, Brian. That's really good of you. You really don't have to, though. Sorry, oh, I, I, I just killed someone. Like, and let me tell you, the pizza we have is to die for. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> A caller did just die on air. It was pretty tasteless, Brian. But that can't be compared to the taste of your pizza. Hey, don't worry about it. It's all right. Oh, I'm sure it's delicious. Well, I just hope I didn't put you or anyone else of coming on down to Ponty's Pizza. I think Sandra's gonna be We're real disappointed, Ponty, but everyone else weekend. in for a good time. Uh, God damn it, you're just calling in to advertise your shop. For, for, Peggy, hang up on him. Done. Oh, real <laughs> quick, before I forget, it's probably time we played a paid ad. Grab a cassette and There's stick America. it in the America. There's nothing. Whatever this is. Uh, let's see what the America sponsor is. Teddy Gallows Jr. is a family man. A devout Christian and a proud patriot. Teddy Gallows Jr. is Gallows Creek. Unlike current mayor Linda Cartwright, oh, Teddy Gallows Jr. lives in Gallows Creek. He's our neighbor like and he stands with our neighbors. Take a swing for Gallows Creek. Vote for Teddy Gallows Jr. My name is Teddy Gallows Jr. and I approve this message. Wow, we actually talked to you. God, what a jackass. 100%. Great A asshole. That ad really made me want to take a swing at Teddy Gallows. You mean take a swing for Teddy Gallows? Yeah, sure. Come on, go in. Let's find out from our next caller who's Just, got their close book. enough. This is Maurice Russell from the Gallows Reporter. I'm at the office. This guy just broke in downstairs and wait. Forrest Nash? I want to speak to 911. Put uh -huh. Leslie on. What? God, another one? How's this guy getting around so quick? Maurice, is there any way you can get out of there? Uh, I sure as shit hope so, kid. But I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. That crash you heard was him tipping over my filing cabinets. Uh-oh. He's blocking the stairs. I'm guessing the stairs are the only way out? That's right. Why don't we call the killer? They'd have a bunch of phones set up across the office, right? In different rooms, with different extensions. So we call one of them. Draw the killer away. You realize how stupid that plan sounds, right? Maurice, please. For that to be successful, you're gonna need every phone extension. Plus, a plan of the entire office floor. All delivered while the killer is en route. I've got it. And thank God I've always been cool under pressure. Don't go anywhere. I don't know if we help him, he's being very rude. Go check your fax machine. Don't what? let me down. Where's our fax machine? This yeah, must this. be it. Alright, so I'm gonna have to work out navigating him so he doesn't die. I feel like there's gonna be a lot of death. We want to draw the killer away by dialing an extension number. And then move Maurice somewhere safe. So, what extension should I call? Okay, so I have to get him away. Uh, I don't. Where, where, where's Maurice currently? Okay, uh, call the archives. Call the archives. The extension is 01. Got it. I'll put the call through when you're ready. All right, Nash. Where do I need to go? You're moving to the kitchen. The kitchen? That's just across from the archives. It's going to be tight. Are you oh, sure, no, Nash? no, no, no. Let me rethink it. Uh, let me rethink this. Damn it, man! Do you want me to be a headline? <laughs> I'm trying, Murray. Hurry up. Could you lock him in a room? That'd probably buy you time enough, right? Maybe. But the damn fire regulation say every door in the office has to unlock from the inside. Wait. Wait, wait. No. No, no, no. I got it. The secret archive through my office, where we keep our most sensitive records. There's no lock on the inside of that room. Only the outside. You can't break out. Get him in there, and I lock him in. We can catch the son of a gun. 
Exactly. Our sports reporter, Hopkins. He has a little portable radio he never turns off. When okay, he's here. that's good. Hope he's a 189.16 the screen fan. Glad you got a radio fan there. Does he listen to 189.16 the scream? Jesus, Nash. <laughs> I'd expect that level of self advertisement from Brian Ponty, <laughs> not you. Maurice, turn the volume down. <coughs> we don't want that thing blasting just yet. Yeah, yeah, I knew that, Nash. I was just doing that when you yelled at me. If I can't have this stupid thing turned up, how am I supposed to draw the killer? I can't be in the room when it's on, or I'm dead. But wait, we're the radio. Yeah, we can do you it. Can just be quiet until you're ready. Uh, Turn the music off. Can do that. I want to play a laugh track yeah. so bad. Hide under the desk, hide in your cabinet, hide inside the secret archive, hide among the cubicles. Uh, let's get a laugh track going. Get in that cabinet. Hide in your cabinet. All right. Well. Get in. This is it. I'm going to go turn the radio up to full blast now. Don't say anything until I've had time to hide. You got it? We know the plan. You can trust us. Here we go. I really want to play it. I think it should be safe now, Forrest. That's it! No more hiding! I'm a tough old man. I've been on the beat longer than you've been alive. Come on down, whistling man. Come and get a knuckle sandwich. Listeners, this is Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And if you've just tuned in... See you in hell, kid! We've just locked up the Whistling Man. Don't, don't tell him, Forrest. He's gonna come for you. There we are, folks. The Whistling Man is locked up. Let's all take a deep breath. And play some killer tunes. Do you have any siblings? I don't. I'm an only child, and my folks are dead. Oh, I'm sorry, Forrest. <laughs> this is all very depressing. My dad walked out when I was about 13. He'd been a wreck for a while. Then he got himself into a wreck, and, well... Mom didn't take it well. She remarried pretty quick after that. She wanted to forget Dad so bad, she even made me take my stepdad's last name. So I'm Peggy Weaver. Hang on, Peggy. You want me? You want to see me land anyway, like a trick shot? Mr. Weaver got sick one day, and my mom yeah, didn't last long after he went. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, Peg. did you see Don't that, Peggy? Peg. Yeah, sorry. I was just. That's a killer to be shot. Me. I had a sister, but I haven't seen her since before my dad. Hold on. <laughs> someone just rang the door buzzer. What on earth could someone want at this hour? Hello, anyone home? A tape. Play on air. Oh, let's go. Let's, let's pop this in. Hello, Gallows Creek. Time to pay the price. Time to pay for lies. Uh oh. Time to sit there. I will punish you. I'm going to enjoy this. I did not enjoy that. I was expecting Poppy's pizza at the end. Uh, sorry about that ad. That uh, uh, <clears throat> wasn't the ad tape we meant to play. <laughs> sorry, folks. It won't happen again. Maurice locked the killer up. I know. Maybe there's multiple. Ash, shut up and listen to me. Mr. Russell, what's wrong? Are you okay? I said listen. He's gone. The whistling man is gone. The guys just grabbed their weapons and unlocked the door. I braced myself and... Yeah, then? Then nothing. The room was empty. The door was still locked. How the hell did he get out? But if he's back from the dead, then... Some kind of ghost. Do you think he's some kind of ghost, Peggy? He's a magician. <laughs> oh, did you say something, Maurice? Baloney. You're gonna saw a man Maloney. in half. This is Gina Franklin. I'm calling because... Your backwater station has not honored our agreement. We gave you Mr. Thatcher's newest single, the kind of honor you 
never. Wait, what? <laughs> probably never will again. And we've still not received any information about when you're fitting it into your busy... Which, which one's Mr. Snatcher? Don't worry about Gina. You know how she is. But yeah, can't wait for you to hear the new single, man. I think Final Breath is my best work yet. I really hope you and your listeners... All right, I've got it. Did we forget an ad or something? I don't know. It was buried in my work. Oh, I <laughs> think he was late. See what it says. Uh, play me ASAP. Off air. That's Reggie's handwriting. Wait. Wait, did I just play on air? That, that didn't just play on air, did it? Oh my god. I can't believe you know Roddy Snatcher. And I can't believe you didn't tell me he sent you his new single. We have to play Final Breath. Where is it? I don't know. They mailed it to KFAM, uh, not to me. Final then breath. it's gotta be downstairs at reception. Folks at KFAM aren't against hoarding station music for personal use. I think we're still missing a few tracks, actually. <laughs> Peggy's just shouting. This must be it. Final breath. My tiny selection grows. New record has been added. Got it. Let's get this on the air. Ah! Gallows Creek. I'm pleased to say we're in for a much needed treat. Up next, courtesy of the British <laughs> sensation himself, is a track you won't hear everywhere. Here's Final Breath by Roddy Snatcher. Oh, guys, the records are built for being scratched, right? So don't worry, they're durable. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. This is Murphy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Murphy. Uh, what have you got for us tonight? Two things, Forrest. First... Happy birthday to my son, Fernando. Bless you, Murphy. And now, my other thing. I'm putting the word out to this so-called killer. You think you're tough. Oh, <laughs> no. Come face me, a true warrior at the gallows waste disposal plant. Uh oh You just let loose the junkyard dog. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <sighs> the direct anyway, challenge. We'll be right back. After this commercial. You need to play a commercial cassette. Great to voicemail. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Hello, Gallows Creek. Oh, no, oh, so, sorry. Uh, that's the wrong one, too. Uh, we got a caller. You know what to do. Oh, how's Hello, it going? Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. <sighs> <laughs> Not again. He's coming for me? Jesus. Okay, listen, caller. Don't panic. We've done this a few times now. We can help you. A few times already? So you saved them or Well actually it's a it's a bit up in the air. Uh... Is there a neighbor you can call for help? No. Everyone's away tonight. There's just a fraternity down the street. You live by a frat house? Yes. They're having a party. That takeout coming in all night. Lawn covered in beer cans. They're getting wasted and and I'm Oh, it sounds like a good time. If get takeout to the frat we can get a message to them to go and help virginia who did they order takeout from i don't know ponty's pizza we know a guy rooting through trash this there we go low. Ooh, interesting offer it's got to be ponty's ponty's pizza may i take your order frat man colin frat man colin we're in major need of foods for dudes uh I take your order. <laughs> Pizza. Oh man, I got a frat to feed. So give me that slow roast pizza. Oh, a fine choice, but that will take <laughs> Oh three no! Hours. Never mind, just give me the garlic bread. Can do. Where do you want that delivered? Uh, same place as before, you know, the frat house. Got it. And we'll have that over to you right away. I didn't think oh, about that slow roast pizza. Thing. Can you add a note to the order that says to call KFAM? KFAM? Oh, consider it done. The folks at KFAM are huge fans of Ponty's Pizza, you know. I should really call them and let them know. <laughs> Mine wants and to get some more advertising. Now we wait. Is this Goose? <laughs> oh, man. It's totally you, isn't it, Goose? I'm not Goose. I. Uh, how can I prove this to you? Norman the Barbarian! What do you think? What is happening? <laughs> Great idea. Norman the Barbarian says only the radio man can control the So, play us. 
us. Whoa. Oh, shit. Okay, okay, radio man. You got my attention. What is it? <laughs> a killer hey, plunker. Listen, you've got to get over to your neighbor's house. All of you, just... Say no more. Plunker's moving the house. Oh, no, he's already gone. Forrest, line two. Wait, did, did it work? Forrest, it's the killer. <laughs> oh, the God. Oh, she's okay. The party has arrived. Oh, thank God. He's gone and... Oh! Oh, is that you, Radio Man? Don't worry. Who's Clive? Here. Good times. Clive, I didn't talk, I promise. What was that about? Hey, Forrest. Did you hear what Virginia said earlier? What was that all about? Clive, I didn't talk. Do you know what she meant? There's a janitor here at the station named Clive, but your guess is as good as mine. All right, folks. Oh, no, it's not going to be Seems him, is it? We may have a lead. If any of you know a suspicious Clive, then please call in. It could save lives. I'm going to go in like the janitor's closet later. Like, oh, God, like there's blood everywhere. Another collar. Hello, collar. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. It's great to speak with you, Forrest. As a local small business owner, <laughs> oh, I find Everyone's this all in. horrifying. Oh, what small business do you own? Oh, well, I'm not really big on promotion, but uh, since you ask, it's Party's Pizza! No, the best not of the pizza place in town! Come on down and get yourself a cracking deal on our two for one. God damn it, Ponty, no! No free ads! <laughs> Ponty, please! Forrest, Teddy Gallows Jr. Oh no. I just want to say that my thoughts and prayers are with my Gallows Creek neighbors during this awful time. Oh, it's mayoral candidate and scion of the town founders, Mr. Gallows. Are you in danger? We need to be a town of law and order. You're a prick, Teddy? <laughs> I want to make sure I get this out on air to all of Gallows Creek. You're a real prick, Teddy. I just want to make sure our town is safe and prosperous. Teddy, unless you've got an emergency, I'm cutting you off. You know what? I do have a problem. A problem. Oh my God, Teddy. Our town. The problem is that woman, <laughs> no, Teddy. our current mayor, Linda Cartwright. You're not better than anyone, Teddy. Just because you inherited half the town, it... Your producer sounds a little unstable, too. Don't you dare speak to me that way. Cut him off, Peggy. I can guarantee you this kind of thing will not happen. <laughs> I just happen can't leave. Get me out of here. The moral decay of... And that's enough of Teddy Gallows Jr. for one lifetime. Hello? Am I on air? Sure, Art Collar. What's your name? And what have you got for us tonight? Name's Eugene Stein, and I've got a heart full of love, Forrest. I'm hanging out in the middle of the maze maze, listening to your the show. The maze maze. Looking up at the stars and waiting for her. Oh, no. Oh, wait a second. Molly can't whistle. No, Eugene. No, no, this is supposed to be the best night of my life. Not the worst. We need, like, a convenient map or something of the maze. Basically what the game wants. Huh. Looks like Brad broke her heart. Wonder what she'd have done with all that maze maze stuff. He would have put it in the bin? Which means it's in here. Bingo. Here's what I was looking for. It is a maze. That's very convenient. I'm lost, Forrest. I just ran and I... Uh-oh. <laughs> Okay, is that one? Oh no, 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 no! Um, how do I get him out? How do I get him out? If he goes, if he goes right, he's gonna be locked in, and there's no escape. So that means he needs to go left. I went left, then tried a right. I have a pig statue in front of me. He's at three. And a creepy rocking horse on my left. If he came up to that, and that's on his left, okay, then he needs to go back. Go backwards. He needs to run that way. <laughs> 
<laughs> for you, G. Uh, there's a tiny barn in front of me and a scarecrow behind me. He's at eight. Nothing to my sides. Uh, he needs to go right. Uh, I can't run much more. Uh, I just passed a cord and silo. Didn't see anything else. Oh god! Please! <laughs> Wait, he's close! Where do I go? He's, he's past the corn silo. He's at nine. He's so close. If I instruct him to go forward, will he take that right path? Or do I need to tell him to go right? Oh, he's okay. I, 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 I'm out! Oh, and my bike's still here! <laughs> oh, thank you, Forrest! I love you, Molly! D don't say too loud, Eugene. Do you think she's okay? Unfortunately for Eugene, I think she probably never left home. Oh, poor Eugene. Collar, you're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, The Scream. Hey, wonderful show tonight, Forrest. Thank you. That's really wonderful of you to say. What's your name, Collar? Uh, you can call me Don. Could you play my tune, Forrest? Your tune? Sure. Long Ride Home. That old song? Sure. Long Ride it. Home. I think I played it the other day. Thanks. It'll be good to hear it again. All right, folks. I don't have it. Is that old classic? Uh, Forrest, I don't think you're going to find that song. What do you mean? I played it a few nights ago. I know, but uh, we don't have it anymore. <sighs> I threw it out the window oh. earlier today. Peggy, why don't you take debt more care of our records in this collection? Like, God forbid, you know, we have to look after these. We have a professional radio station, Peggy. We have to take this seriously. Oh, Forrest, scrap the song. We have another caller. <laughs> oh, no, Murphy. It came from the gallows waste disposal plant. Beat on me, man. Carry me inside and lock me in a dumpster. Oh, God. I got a flashlight. But... Oh. oh, God damn. I smell smoke. You gotta hurry, man. I need someone here now or I'm gonna die. He... Oh, God damn it. Forrest, that evil son of a bitch slashed the tires on the town's only fire engine. Why is there they only one? But I have a few friends who live nearby. Maybe one of them can save Murphy. Where do they live? My friend Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield and Romero Street. Oh, God. Catherine lives on the west end of Myers Lane. And there's Jericho on the east end of Myers Lane. But he's old. Really old. Okay, I'll check the map. See who Wait, wait, to repeat that information, please. Alex lives there. Can Alex do it? What is this notice like really saying? East side McCready Street will be closed. Where's McCready Street? Is that matter? Do we do uh, old man or, or catty? It's gotta be the old man. Okay. Alright, Forrest, who should I call? Who can help Murphy? Call Jericho. Alright, give me a second. Jericho, you gotta pick up. They're on the way. They'll call from the plant. You can direct them from there. Well, let's hope they get there in time. Come on, come on, old man. He's the closest one. Uh, old man Jericho wasn't fast enough. But, he down. lives so he close. So Murphy is... Poor Fernando is gonna be crushed. Oh no. He's so close. Yeah, Fernando will be crushed. Just like his dad. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> poor kid. Forrest, that I wasn't trying to set you up for a punchline. No, I know. We'll be right back after these messages. Get this fight. The world famous annual Gallows Creek Harvest Festival is back! Oh shit. We got the Little Miss Harvest Pageant, Princess Harvest Pageant, Harvest Queen Pageant, Cotton Candy, Corn Dogs, Cornhole, Corn on the Cob, Crokinole, Country Music, Can Jam, Jams, Jellies, oh, Jamboree, Juggling, Roller Rickies, Roller Disco Lessons. Roller Ray. Ricky. We got baby crawling, balloon popping, balloons for sale, beard contest, horseshoes, hayride, hay toss, hey you there, safe donkeys and ponies, apple bobbing, firearm, fireworks, <laughs> just cake, guns, ride, go, seats, bitten, sand licking, cracker cramming, and cat shop. They got it all. 
man, fake tattoo face painting puppets, petting zoo, amazing maze maze, square dancing, story swapping, spelling bee, quilting bee, and sewing circle, pie eating, lawnmower racing, hot dog eating contest, flower contest, and of course our famous gold. They have it all, folks. Off. It's a highlight around here, Forrest. Oh, I am sorry to hear that, <laughs> Peggy. Hey, all right, it. folks, welcome back to the show. We have a note from my producer. That's right. Come find me at the Harvest Festival tomorrow to grab your choice of a KFAM mug, sticker set, or poster. Let's see what our next caller would choose. Caller on line one. Someone else is on the air. Who is this? I need the police. <laughs> There's so I'm much Forrest violence Nash. in this I'm, town tonight. I'm standing in for 911 tonight. What, what's wrong? Oh, hey, it's just a prank. <laughs> what? 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 It's prank night, old man. We're just having fun. That's the kid. The kid who called in earlier pretending to be the whistling. Oh, man. he's gonna die. That's it. I'm out of here. <sighs> Would you take off that stupid mask if it's hard to breathe? Who's under there anyway? Hmm? Is that you, Seth? Idiot. Seth is right next to you. That's, uh... <laughs> oh, no. Oh no. Who, uh, uh oh. Oh no, man. <laughs> Everyone, get inside. <laughs> right? Everyone, run. You two, get out the door. Scott Heather, you better get the back. As long as he's out there and we're in, we're safe, right? You bought time, but not much. Forrest, we have to... Heather, I already called the cops. We'll figure something out. Between all of you, there's got to be a way to beat this. Just sit tight, okay? Heather, shut up. If we do that, we're going to get killed. <sighs> if only Jeannie were here. Jeannie? Jeannie McPherson? Our intern Jeannie? Yes. She's my best friend and the smartest one out of all of us. She stayed in tonight. We're gonna work out a way to save Carrie and her friends. This next one goes out to all the trapped kids out there. <laughs> Final fresh. <laughs> Sister desk. Jeez, they really tucked Jeannie away. Rock on, Storm Riders, gallows for life. Let's check out the card. Good luck, Jeannie. I'm so proud of you. Make lots of friends and work out lots of love, Mom. Aw, oh, bless. Don't mess it up. Friendship quiz. This might work. What was the f YouTube? What's that? <laughs> that scared the shit out of me. I think one of the folders fell. First things first, we'll need a spotter. Someone who can keep an eye on the killer. We'll need someone on the roof. It's gonna be a hard climb. We're deciding between like, Heather, Kyle, and Hot David. It's gotta be Hot David. Wait, no. Oh, no, wait, no. I'll tell you, the, the, the amount of points equals who's most likely Heather. Heather is the best climber. Heather's got this. Yes, Heather. He picked you. Who should lure the killer by running away? Uh, Olympic athlete? Um, Hot David. Hot David. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, uh, do spend a lot of time running shirtless. Someone can pretend to be injured. Who would make the most believable? Both like to win an Oscar, it's Lisa or we Tammy. Got Lisa, Tammy, and Cynthia. Uh, it's Lisa or Tammy. Uh, do Lisa or Tammy have any other talents? Uh, Lisa. Lisa. Just go. Whoa. Yeah, pick right, one. Lisa. Having to smile at rude customers is perfect practice. That should take care of the killer. We need someone who can drive us through the woods and back to Gallows Creek alive. Okay, Scott. Scott will end up in a car Chad crash, so it can't be him. Chad. Oh, perfect. Your go karting experience will be great. Chad. Scott will get him killed. All right, Renner. Get ready. Wait for the spotter signal. Spotter says go. Here they go. Wow, well, we're cheering for you. All the children in the in the station. They're here for you. All right. Wait. Get into position. Everybody else.
want to stay open? I'll hold it. You drive through. Uh, Carrie? Carrie. What was that? It's a whistling man. Uh oh. Now! Carrie! Gary's in trouble. Let me go. Just go. Just drive. Oh my god. Please, no. No. Carrie? Just stared at me and walked into the place. I don't understand. He's okay! Breathe, Carrie. You're okay now. I'll call you when I'm somewhere safe. Talk to you then. He's okay! Folks, that was a... That was a lot. I just wanted to phone in and say that I think I speak for everyone when I say that you're providing a real service for Gallows Creek tonight. It's cool what you're doing, man. Well, I'm just doing my job, friend. Anyway, I'm playing God. Yourself. I'm at my roller rink. Trying to get everything ready for the Harvest Festival tomorrow. I had a guy from Starlink Security here earlier installing the Starlink 4000 system, so I'm a little behind. As for my name, my friends call me Roller Ricky, and I now consider you a friend, my man. Oh. Oh, hello, Max. <laughs> Welcome. We've gone to the dogs. There it is, folks. We've officially gone to the dogs. Is that another train, Maxie? Maxie loves trains, uh -oh. man. He's even got that special how to greet them. You're a great pair. Can I request a song for us? Something I can groove to, you know, something funky. If something happens It'll to Roller Ricky, Maxie's you're legally liable. Oh, no. Tonight. You'll like this next song. I really needed that call, you know, after everything. Yeah, I get that. He talked a bit much for my taste, but it sure hope nothing terrible to happens to him. Somebody come back from How much the stuff is just like, like tossed in front of you? Yeah, that, that's what I meant. <laughs> it's just items everywhere. You're through to 189.16, The Scream. What's your emergency? Hello again, Forrest. Oh, that call with the teens was awful. Was oh, this is where it was before I requested the song. Um, I'll play a track for you, Don, but maybe pick another one? We don't exactly have that one in rotation right now. No, Forrest. You do have it. It's just outside the window. There's a serial killer on the loose. I can't just go outside hunting for a record. I'm really sorry, Don. Yeah, we can't but play we it. We just can't get it right now. But wasn't the whistling man just at the old murder house? No. Miles from the station. It won't take you a second to grab it. No. Forrest, Peggy, I'm, I'm calling with more than a request. I know something. I think I know who's gonna be next. What? Are you serious? It's gonna be us. Play my song for it's us. gonna be us. Find out. Don't like this. Don't like this one bit. He found the fire door. Oh, we should not be doing this. This is so stupid. I hate this. There he is. <laughs> that was him. Here it is. Long ride home. Of course, it locks behind me. And of course the key doesn't work on this side. Fantastic. Maybe there's another way back in through the basement. I'm gonna just save it here before I like meet an untimely demise. <laughs> well, this is the only way back in. Looks like the janitor's closet. What did Peggy say his name was? Clive? Game, please. Oh God. Well, what the hell? This can't be good. Peggy is not gonna believe this. Jesus, Forrest, you've been gone for. She's okay. Thought something had happened. Something did happen. Clive, the janitor. Might be Clive the murderer. What? I'll start from the beginning. The, uh, the fire. Gotta recap. No, but it seems too convenient. We have a creepy board you found in a creepy basement made by our creepy janitor, 
who you think is the creepy whistling man. Yep. And on the creepy board are the names Chuck Brody, Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen, and Aunt Williams. Correct. And you think one of these people will be the whistling man's Clive's next target. That's right. And oh, it's a red heron. It's totally you Jeannie, because Jeannie's the intern, and she has a bunch of horror films on her desk. The hospital, the power station, the gas station, and the trailer park. We need to figure out if anyone is at any of the four locations tonight. And if they are, we can call them and warn them. Okay. There must be some connections between the notes. So we need to, like, analyze our evidence. Big Wheel breaks free, 15 injured, who is to blame? Gow's Creek Harvest Festival closed earlier this year after tragedy struck only hours after opening. Big Wheel broke free from its supports. Hospital, gas station, trailer park, power station. Uh, marriage announcement? We have to decide about the marriage of Kim Walker and Peter Stein. Call for donations. Robert Gow's high, uh, high football, Captain Chuck Brody, suffered a career-ended injury. Victim of the festival disaster late last year. Up on his road to recovery, we are buying him some lottery tickets. Hopefully he gets lucky and get back on his feet. Walker recommends all locals get their flu shot. ASAP. flu season is upon us. Maybe it was no different than any other year. Make sure you are protected. Okay, so that's Kim. Yeah, they were distracted by time of horror movies while assembling the big wheel, which led to various construction mistakes. They've been offered. They've been ordered to do community service. Featuring a special mission guest, the lead engineer responsible for the Gallows Creek Harvest Festival disaster in 1972. Wait. It's 1987. The engineers are contracted from the local power station, Aunt Williams. So it's Aunt Williams. Diary of a car thief. Oh no, Rebecca Allen's the car thief. Okay, so Rebecca Allen, we actually have placed. She's in the trailer park. It's probably more likely that Kim is at the hospital because she's recommending doctor stuff. Okay, Kim's dead. Kim's dead, right. So Kim's out of the picture. Uh, the captain is Chuck Brody, so that's him. Rebecca Allen, we've worked that out. This is Rebecca, the car thief. It seems gas and repair has been sold to a man who won the lottery 14 years ago. Who won the lottery? <laughs> Drop tickets in the buckets below. Help on his road to recovery. We are buying some lottery... Lottery tickets! Oh, Chuck won the lottery. Okay, Chuck won the lottery. Which means that Chuck is at the gas station. Which means the ant must be at the power station. The question is, where do we think they're gonna strike? We know Chuck is at the gas station. We don't know where Aunt Williams is. It's unlikely that Aunt Williams is here at this time of night. So it's gotta be Chuck in the gas station. Okay. Chuck Brody. And where will I find them? He's working late at the gas station. The gas station. Okay, I'm dialing. Can we save him? Oh! Chuck Brody! Listen, I know this <laughs> sounds crazy, but we have reason to believe the whistling man is coming for you. You need to get yourself and everyone else out right now. It's today. The year I finally let myself forget. I no man. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> He's just running. Well, fingers crossed that Chuck <laughs> Jeez! It sounds like something blew up! He's using bombs now? I I is uh, Chuck. I don't know. Hello? Chuck? <laughs> the station uh, just explodes. The whole goddamn gas station's gone up. Is anyone hurt? I don't think so. I got everyone to follow me. Oh out. my god! The only ambulance was blown to hell, though. Why is there only one ambulance yeah. as well? Careful with this next track, listeners. It's dynamite. Forest. Look, we might as well have some fun, okay? People are gonna be dying regardless tonight. There's gotta be more in the basement to show us who Clive is targeting. And if that's the case, we can get ahead no, of Cl him. No, Clive is trying Stop to work out who was next. They can happen. Oh, God. No, I did not see that in the wall. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, Forrest! Peggy, give me some warning before yelling down the intercom. <laughs> Sorry. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Jesus Christ, Peggy. George Bell, 1968. That's when this all began for me. Follow the maps. Find the tapes. What's YouTube chick saw? <laughs> Wait, George Barrow? We all heard that he drowned after a night out drinking. System overview, access codes. 
maintenance call code, alarm test warning to stop, all security measures, alarm test deactivation code. Oh god. Did someone remember all that? If you're listening to this, then I'm probably dead. What the Oh no. One after the other. Each headline about a murder. Each murder the death of someone I knew almost twenty years ago. None of us are innocent. But I don't think we deserve killing. All I hope now is that I can save some folk from the worst. And I can. I think the guy who we thought died by drowning, Clive and the others were complicit in him dying, and Jeannie's enacting revenge on the people who let her dad die. I think there's gotta be more down here. No, I don't wanna spend more time down here. I wanna go back upstairs. I wanna go back. I don't like it anymore. Okay, yeah, um, no, fantastic suggestion. Just to take, to ease the tension a bit, because it's really hard to get uh, scared when all this is blaring. Okay, there we go. Now we're just on a happy-go-lucky adventure. 4 a.m. A call was received from a jogger, a Miss Sandra Cher, reporting that a body had been found washed up in the reservoir. Oh no, Sandra's the one who died. I drove out to investigate and was able to identify the body at the scene as that of George Barrow. I contacted the coroner's office and then the boy's partners. Well, parents. They informed me that they had not seen him since 7 p.m. on the 2nd. I think there's gotta be more death. Fuck here. me! <laughs> I need to... Now this has to be important. I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. Uh... Did Virginia make it? Did we save Virginia? They completely faked this, though, and you can tell. It's the coroner's opinion that the seas went swimming while intoxicated resulting in his drowning. Yeah, so this is completely faked. Okay, so they all covered it up, and that's why Jeannie's taking revenge. Do you think you found everything? <sighs> I think Thank so. God. Let's go. Thank God. Thank God you're back, Forrest. Yeah, me too, Peggy. Running out I know this is really out of the blue with everything happening tonight. But I wondered if you could send a special birthday message to my uncle. Ch let's go. You know what? I'd welcome a change of pace. I'd be glad to. Thank you, Boris. <laughs> He's my <laughs> Uncle Ronnie. Folks always call him. Pepper. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday you would like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my god damn it! Yes! Tell him he can get the best <laughs> birthday deals of party packages here at Pony's Pizza. Start hanging just- You son of a bitch! Stop calling us! I love Pony's Sorry for Pizza. Us. <laughs> Let's just move on. Ponty. Ponty's Pizza <laughs> always delivers! <laughs> Come rain or sleet or whistling wind. He just we'll called be back. <laughs> Thought he's got to be stuffed. Forest? Forest? Are you okay? <sighs> Forest? I hope the whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus, Forest? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, that was <gasps> actual that serial was killer. I hope you're next. It's okay. We found your autopsy reports for George Barrow. How? I saw him destroy them. Well, he didn't. I don't know if he kept them or made copies or what, but we found them. And we know it's related to what's happening tonight, which is why we called you. Why did you write a false report? And as I finished the autopsy, this man, Clive, he just burst in. He started making demands to give over the reports, to falsify what I found. Of course I said no, but, well, when someone wants to make you do something, they can use the carrot or the stick. For me, he used both. You see, my sister is sick, and Clive promised me that his employer 
would pay for my sister's treatment if I did what he said, and that if I ever spoke about this, he'd beat me to within an inch of my life. Oh no! I Thank you, Virginia. That was brave. God, Thank you that. I just want this nightmare to end. This will help end it, Virginia. Thank you. Stay safe. Virginia. We're not gonna be able to get the full story though, because two people died. Well, hello again, Forrest. Don. Don. We played your song. Oh no! Right no, Did Don you hear? is. Can you tell us? Uh, never mind that now. First, I'm calling because I need your help. I came back to my apartment building, but this newfangled security system has me locked out. If I, I need I'm gonna help, help her get inside. in. She's gonna kill someone. It's the new Woodside apartment building in the trailer park. But I doubt what is happening in like the background? I don't have many neighbors. Sounds like no, a piece of real estate. That's uh, that's it's the roller's really dog. Tonight. Shit. Is that a neighbor's dog? Yes, it is. Boy, I wish he'd muscle that thing and oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. What's the name of the security Okay, so system? don't help her. Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Yep, don't help Starling her. We need to set off an alarm or something. Okay, uh give the alarm test activation code. That's the one we need. The code is 191519. Thank you, Forrest. There we go. Is she? Uh, Ricky. Ricky, I'm hoping you're gonna be okay, bud. Yeah, stay out! Nobody disrespects the sanctity of the ring! Don't He's okay. Ricky's alright. Listen, man, I'm heading back inside. Gonna barricade that window. My man, thank you. You and Peggy can skate for free, whenever you want, forever. That's a done deal. I... Thanks, Ricky. Can't wait. Got it. Talk to you soon. Oh. Okay. Gallows Creek. Ricky's alive. So, the whistling man... It's... It's Jeannie. ...is a woman? I worked it out a while ago. <laughs> I, must I be. had my suspicions. Yeah, sure, Forrest. You just never mentioned it. But I it. did! I actually worked it out! She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. We're now in incredible danger because there's only the apartments left and then they're gonna call in here in person. This is Forrest Nash and you're listening. Please help me! My name is Casey Moore. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My oh God. best friend's been stabbed. He's, he's bleeding everywhere. I don't know what to do. Please help me. I can't drive, so... We need an that's, that's, that's already exploded. Forrest, the ambulance was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. They stabbed him in the stomach, and then stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground. And okay, that's pretty bad. Oh, the knife is still there in his leg. What's your friend's name, Casey? It's Jason. Jason Parker. We'll be right back. Peggy, uh, patches through to the Jason hospital. Jason on this? On it. All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first, and then finding someone to stabilize him. God. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Lay him down. Apply continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. Okay. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. If the object he was stabbed with is still in him, don't take it out. Do not remove the knife. stop the force of the bleeding right now. If anything, you should secure it so it stays where it is. If it's safe, Elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Try to keep him warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. Hello, Forrest, are you there? How's Jason? I'm here. How is Jason doing? Badly. He's still bleeding. I need help. Okay. I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. But he's still bleeding. I don't know what okay, to do. Okay, we, we need bandages. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. <laughs> don't, no. Do not touch the knife. No, don't touch the knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you sure? I'm sorry. I'm going to stop making suggestions. No, don't worry, Casey. We're a team here. We're all going to get Jason through this. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? I hate 
hate looking at that knife. Y yeah, yeah. It's okay. Bleeding. His stomach is worse, though. Um, we need to secure the knife. I think we need to secure the knife so it doesn't move around. Do you have anything you can tie around it? Uh, yeah. There's some laundry piled up on top of the dryer. Some cloths on the hood of the car, and what else? Uh, I guess I've got my jacket. Uh, not the cleaning rags. That, that's gonna be agony. Jacket is not good. Use the laundry. Look in the laundry for something like a towel or a shirt. Cleaning rags. Hold that over the wound. Okay. Looks like I'm gonna have to buy you some new whites, Jason. Here we go. I'm sorry, Jason. It's secure. I'm putting pressure on his stomach again. I'm starting to think we might make it. Forrest, can I have a word? What is it, Peggy? Casey, I'm gonna have a quick word with Peggy. Okay. I'll wait. Jason, please be okay. I hope he's gonna be all right. What is it, Peggy? This is a very important call right now. What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? Could somebody nearby help them? Maybe drive them to the hospital? You know, that's exactly what I was wondering. Do you have anybody in mind? I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a producer getaway. You skipped it, didn't you? I, never mind. So, how does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah, why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses uh, around there. We're not there calling about old man Jericho ago. again, are we? So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. It's a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. Get a load of this, Peggy. Apparently, I'm a lone wolf type. Ca what are you doing? We don't have time for this. <laughs> we have a man literally dying on the line, and you're more interested in you. Okay, you're Peggy. Right. I'm sorry. I need to focus on possible candidates. Yeah, that's a I fair point, Peggy. Later. <laughs> Please pick up. Casey, I'm here. What's wrong? Uh, he, he's going, he needs to, we need to raise his legs. God, it sounds like he's going into shock. Casey, just stay calm. It's going to be okay. But the bleeders need to slow down. It was elevate his legs specifically so more blood can go to his vitals. Casey, I need you to elevate Jason's legs. We need to get the blood flowing to his vital organs. Got it. Okay, now while that's happening, let's see the dirt on Barbara. We gotta know what's going on. Hang on, where is it? Casey? I need you to be strong. Yeah, just Jason. keep sit with him. Keep an eye on him. Reassure him that everything's gonna be okay. Just getting okay. Barbara's getting okay. on well with all the staff here. I made to give her great okay. feedback at our last review. I get the feeling there's something going on with her and Brad. Call it a hunch. Barbara laughed when I told her about the concept for my horror script. Oh, it's, I, uh, wait, it was John. Sorry, it's just reading the dirt. A man has been stabbed by the whistling man, or. Never mind. He, he's badly hurt and he's going to die unless we get someone to him now. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, we're not kidding. A man is going to die if we don't help him right now. He's at 25 Nancy Drive. My God, I think thank God for us remember that. The bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. Let me grab a few supplies and I'll head right over. Damned if he dies on my watch. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. Yo, know, I can see from your personnel file here right. that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Top-notch employee. Casey, are you there? I've got all the dirt on you. We well, folks, we just stopped the flow of blood. So you know what that means. It's time for the flow. Can't stop their beats. Now it's time to go with the flow. And this is their hit, crying for help. <laughs> oh, God. You're going to want to take this call off the air. Who is it? Just do it. All right, folks, it's time for another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. Uh... I hope this is good news, Peggy. Who have we got? Find out for yourself on line one. Th this can't be good. Peggy's a bit ominous with Hello? Him. Forrest, I'm glad I got back through. Oh, here. shit. Sounds like it's been a busy night, huh? The police Surprise! are actually it's returning. It's Leslie, our 911 operator, leading the charge from Henderson to come save us. We're still a little ways out of town, so if she calls, stall her. 
buy as much time as you can for us to get in. And while you're talking to her, try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in. So once her location is known, we'll head straight there. It's gonna be here. Nightmare. It's gonna be here. Welcome back to 189.16, The Stream. I believe we have another caller on the line. How are you tonight, caller? Forrest, it's me, Roller Ricky. Oh, oh and Maxie's oh. here too. Good to hear from you. Good to hear from you again. How are you both doing? Actually, I think I have some info that might help you. You see, man, uh, me and Jason know each other. You know each other? Yeah, we went to Gallus High and played on the football team together. He was a gnarly offensive linesman, and I was our star wide receiver. All right, and what does that have to do with tonight? Well, because George, the guy who drowned, he was on our team too. Ricky. Were you there when George drowned? No, man. Once the party turned, I'd be beat out of there. Man, I remember George and his girl there. There was a whole lot of love, man. I could see it, you know? Tell me about it. Ricky, listen, this is very important. I need to know everything about her. I didn't really know her before or see her after that. I never even got her name, man. I just remember he called her Bean. Then what did she look like? Please, tell us anything you remember. I just remember a pretty girl, man. Bean? Maybe Jean? I'm sorry. I'm guessing it was whistling night, wasn't it? That the whistling man was just another kid. Yeah. I don't know how George died, but... Uh, I always felt like if anyone deserved to die that night, it should have been me. Uh, it wasn't your fault. It wasn't your fault. You're not a bad person. I know that now, ma'am. Looks like we got a new lead in the case. If anyone has any info about this mysterious bean, please call in. If she was George's please. girlfriend back then, please, we need info. She's probably in her mid to late thirties now. Evening caller, this is Forrest Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. I'm here with Casey. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. Is he, John, is he okay? Is he gonna be okay? He's a fighter. He'll be fine. We've got him stabilized and resting in a bed. We're preparing to move him to the hospital. Thank you so much. If you haven't been there, then... God, I don't even want to think about what would have happened. Of course, Casey. We're just happy he's okay. John, Casey, you two did all the work. Tell Jason to get well soon from us. Whatever he's up for. Why don't you tell him yourself? Is this Forrest? The one and only. The one and only. I hope you're feeling better. It's good to hear you, Jason. How are you? Oh, well, you know. I've got a hole in my stomach, and there's a knife in my leg. Hey, guys, I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right back. Sure, Peggy. Sorry, Jason. Uh, where was I? Ah, yep. Uh-oh. Ricky's fine. You don't need to worry about him. That's a relief. He told us about George. Uh-oh. Sounds like everything's finally coming out now. It's been tough to hold it all Jason, in. Jason, I'm going like to have to cut things short. About something awful, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. Jason, and the Jason, I'm gonna have to get you off the line. Said if I ever said anything, I'd find myself in jail. A long time. Peggy, be, Peggy, no. you all right? Who killed George that night? <sighs> Some of the guys on the football team had an idea for a way we could haze the newcomers. Decided to plan a party in the woods. <laughs> get up! Uh, turn that music up. Had a role. I was the stabbed friend. The party that night, I left the group for a second. That our whistling man tended to get stabbed in front of everyone. Started an all night down of screams. That was the last time I saw or heard George alive. How did George die, Jason? I don't know. I was playing dead, but when I heard her scream, 
Ricky mentioned a girl named Bean. Is that who you mean? Bean? Oh, yeah. I guess George did call her that. Yeah. He called her Bean. I heard her again tonight, Forrest. Her name was... What? Uh-oh. What happened? Are we still on air? No. No, we're not. Seems like the power is completely gone. How do we get it back on? I don't... Uh... Oh, we can use the emergency generator down in the basement. Ricky picked it up a while Oh, no. Well, this is horrific. Okay, I got... Let me... <sighs> Pop on the Wii Sports music and be brave, folks. Boom! We've got power. No! No, Peggy! Oh no. Peggy! Yeah, maybe, maybe we should stop the Wii Sports music. Where'd you go? Oh no! No way. This can't be happening. What the? A call. Where's Peggy? Where's Peggy, Don? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show. But it's not over just yet. We've got a little time still. So let's make the most of it. What do you mean? Make the most of it how? I thought we'd end tonight's Whistling Man special with a special guest. The one who started it all. Oh, let me take that out of your mouth. Yeah, there's two of them. You crazy bitch! Let me go! Welcome to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. There's two of you. Who am I looking at? Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallows Creek to my boy, Henry Barrow. Hi, Henry. Hi, Henry. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so there were two whistling men tonight. Of course. That explains how you were always able to get around town so quickly. And that's how you escaped the secret archives in the newspaper office. I don't think I've forgotten about that, Forrest. Locking my sweet boy away like an animal. Marie Campbell? George is I'm surprised it wasn't Jeannie. <laughs> oh. Well, it sure has been years since I last saw Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Where are you going with all of this? Everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. He killed George that night. This night. 20 years ago. Listen to me. You... Ah! Oh, Teddy's... When I talk to Teddy's you. getting his ass handed to him. And not a moment before. These people you've been trying to save, they were all in on it. They all knew George was murdered, but... Murdered? Uh, listen, I... Thanks, Teddy. Teddy, Teddy's got to help us, stall. <laughs> Good job, Teddy. I said you speak when Take you're a beating, Teddy. to. Now, I know you've done some good work tonight in piecing together what happened to George 20 years ago. And that's why I want you to interview us. Are you serious? You, you want you me to stall. interview you? Am I serious? Keep asking questions. After everything tonight, you really have to ask me if I'm serious. Uh... Do a good job. And hell, you might be the only one to leave here alive. <laughs> Teddy. Teddy's not looking too good. I need to drag this out. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek. And if I can find out where Marie is, then this can end. Teddy, we'll start with you. Just, uh, talk me through what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? It was 20 years ago. Hit him, Marie. <laughs> Hit him again, Marie. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Our first team party was coming up. And when I saw the date it was scheduled for, I had an idea for a way we could Prank the new guys. Uh, whistling. Right? I understand that kids in Gallows Creek know tonight as Whistling Night. I'm guessing that's what you mean. Well, we didn't have a name for it then. 
it was just the night that Mooney went missing. But Whistling Night is what they'd call it later. Wait. You mean this was the first Whistling Night? I, uh... Keep talking, Teddy. We went up near Whistling Point. About midway through the night, we put the prank into action. We looked up at the trees and saw Jason there. Bloody, like he'd just been stabbed. And the Whistling Man... Scream. George and I and Ricky... We got left behind, but Ricky was in on it too. I know he was. He and Teddy were as close as anybody. Teddy not having much chance to interrupt and make him stall. Okay, how, I, I want long answers. No, Ricky didn't know. Don't say that. Did you ask Ricky? I need to get him to, I need to get him talking. Always questions. Did you ask Ricky if he knew or not? I didn't see any reason to. Yeah, Why? this is stalling. Because Ricky phoned up earlier. He didn't know anything about it, Marie. What? He had no idea what was happening. He said he was as terrified as anybody. Isn't that right, Teddy? You didn't tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. If we told him, he would have given everything away. But he... well... It doesn't matter. He didn't run his mouth enough to tell anybody about it afterwards. He's still guilty. It was just a stupid prank. Hit him, Marie. <laughs> Did we just hit him again? Hit him again, Marie. Oh, oh God damn it. <laughs> Who was under the mask, Marie? Who was the one? <laughs> oh, excuse me, sir. Chuck. Chuck Brody. Laughing away. But then he stops. And he's looking up at the top of Whistling Point. What was he looking at? <laughs> Teddy, what happened next? Nothing. I mean, it was just... Teddy! George fell off Whistling Point. Oh, God. Okay, Stalin, Stalin, where were you? How do you know? Why did he fall? It was just a stupid joke gone wrong. So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Why should a blip? Lord, my Teddy, you're the worst. George was a blip? Oh, I, 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 uh, he wasn't a blip. He wasn't a Let's blip. Let's not get Teddy killed. <laughs> His father covered it up from there. I searched for George's body all night, but... You never found his body, Murray? I looked all night. Jogger found him the next morning. It's by some somebody to Marie, or everyone's gonna die Instead here. Instead of telling the truth, she lied. She said she found him in the reservoir. Our jazz runner, Sandra Sharp. Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. Said George was drinking. That he just got himself into trouble. And... Fake report? I only heard the tapes. You'd be disgusted by it. For all it's worth... Virginia didn't have much of a choice. She had a sick sister whose treatments she couldn't afford. Oh, you can stall based on who lived as well. We don't have any info, life. though. And her own. Even, even still, she should have told. Two people are dead. Oh no, we might not live long enough. I tried everything I could think of. You've been through hell. This has to stop. When will the killing end? Don't don't reference killing. You don't want to put killing on their mind. Uh, you've been through hell. You've been through hell, Marie. I'm sorry. You've got no idea. You've never... Should have... Started! It's coming to a stop. At least for now. Here. Where George and I first uh. met. Before he joined your football team. Was right after he shot the winning throw. Wait a sec. Where is Marie holding Teddy hostage? Uh, is it the gym? We're at Gallows Creek High, in the gymnasium. Hello. That's right, Forrest. Not that it matters, but yes, we're here. Anyway, I think that about wraps up the interview with Teddy. Oh, Teddy, Teddy survived. I got an achievement so, for it. Marie, where? Oh my god. Peggy. Teddy? You've got to help me. I, 
Wait, dude. Quiet. You'll talk more. Peggy's there too. And here I was, thinking you'd forgot me. I'd never forget my own sister. <laughs> no, Peggy. <laughs> Earlier, while you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. Happy birthday, sis. Well, love M. It was from Doc. Oh, oh that my sister God. Marie there that night George died and that I should come to the gym for a reunion and when you walked in you found out that my sister is the whistling man good to see you too Peggy why didn't you tell me any of this is it, well this is looking good for us <laughs> chance to see my sister I knew if I told you you'd try to stop me or come with me when we need on the radio. What happened to you, Marie? You just disappeared one day. Disappeared? I was thrown out, Peggy. I begged Mom and Dad to do something about what happened that night, but did they care? No. They told me to stay quiet. They only cared when they learned I'd been with George. And. And. Uh, Marie, I'm so sorry. God, I hope this is enough I time for the police knew. to save me. <laughs> You forgot me. Just like the rest. You forgot. I miss Marie, my soundboard. Peggy never forgot about you. Keep your mouth shut. She kept a card from you. She, yeah, it's here. she kept it here on her desk. What card? The card you made me for my eighth birthday. Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love, M. I... My God, we have this. Well, I... Uh-oh. Ah! We have two wounded, and we're in pursuit of the suspect. Hand is in police. Freeze. I'll be okay. Peggy's alive. God, Marie. Hey, Sara. I need you to look after Peggy. She needs help. Now. We got here just in the nick of time. Where's Marie? She bolted right as we got here. The police are right on her heels. It won't be long now. It's over for us. Oh, thank God. We saved Peggy. Well, folks, it was a long night, but we made it through together. I'm gonna head off to go check on Peggy. This has been Forrest Nash. It's been a scream. And it's been a scream. <laughs> Two people are dead. I don't think Marie's gonna make it. Oh no, Marie got away. Oh no, wait, no, no, she she fell off a cliff. Okay, I forgot Whistling Point is a cliff, isn't it? Okay, never mind. Well, you know, Pawnee's Pizza though. That's one free beer for every point that the Gallo High wins by choosing his big game. Best pizza in town for nine dollars. That's a hell of a deal. It's gotta be good. <laughs>